Coming up on the Shark Fighter podcast. So on the set, I'm falling down. <laughs> and I'm sure like people are wondering, like, this director is like drunk or something. <laughs> Andrina Johnson is an actor with Hollywood credibility, but she also suffers from neurosarcoidosis. So she made a short documentary that you can actually watch on Prime Video. I was really surprised by how well received this little thing was by, you know, others outside of our community and appreciated so much by those living with sarcoidosis that it further inspired me to like, let's make a real film out of this. You know, there's an interest here. Coming up, Andrina talks about how sarcoidosis has affected her acting career and pushed her behind the camera to where she is now producing a full-length documentary on sarcoidosis. This is the Sark Fighter Podcast, living with sarcoidosis and other rare diseases. Here's your host, John Carlin. Hello and welcome. This is episode 28 of the Sark Fighter podcast, brought to you in part by a grant from A Tire Pharma. The official Sark Fighter song is called Zombie by Mark Steyer, a fellow Sark Fighter, and the White Hot Lizards out of Alberta, Canada. I call this the Sark Fighter podcast because I'm fighting Sark. And so are you in one way or another, whether you're the patient, the caregiver, a researcher, a doctor, a nurse, whatever it is, you're in the sphere that includes sarcoidosis and we're all fighting SARC together. It's a place where we can all gather. Uh, I hear over and over that people with sarcoidosis feel like they are all alone. We're scattered across the world. And we do have people all over the world now listening to the Sark Fighter podcast. And man, it just tickles me to look up uh, on the uh, diagnostics of my data and see that there are people in Australia listening to the Sark Fighter podcast, Canada, England, Ireland, Africa, you name it, people are, are finding the Sark Fighter podcast. And please help me spread the word by by pushing it out. But, you know, the thing is, is, is that we have to have We have to have a reason to hope. And when we talk to the researchers, we hear how they're doing. When we look at at the different um, new drugs that are maybe coming on the market, or we hear that more and more doctors are becoming aware of sarcoidosis, and we don't have to have these long periods of misdiagnosis, that's really what it's all about. It's just getting the word out there and getting sarcoidosis in front of the medical community. And and if you have a sarcoidosis, letting you know that some of the things you're going through, some of these medications that have the terrible side effects, you're not doing it alone. There are lots of other people who are going through the same things. And sometimes their perspective or just knowing that there's somebody else out there is, is super helpful. So that's why we're doing the Sark Fighter podcast. And uh, normally I release a new podcast every other Monday as we come up on one year of doing this. And so far I've been able to do that. I can't promise that it'll always happen with my busy life and, and the busy lives of the people who want to come on. But so far, every other Monday, we've been able to come up with a new podcast. So speaking of that, if you're new to the disease and you have Googled and come across the Sark Fighter podcast and you are just trying to figure out what do I have, what's going on with my body, listen to episode two with Dr. Simon Hart from the UK. I interviewed him very early on. That's sort of the baseline for sarcoidosis and then everything sort of grows from there. I also recorded my story in episode one. And then we do a lot of work here with the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. I'm a volunteer with the organization. And in episode 11, I interviewed the founders, Andrea and Redding Wilson. Andrea has a terrible case of sarcoidosis, and and she was very willing to come on and share how how it led her to start the foundation with her husband, Redding, and, and now 20 years later, here we are. Atire Pharma is a presenting sponsor for the podcast. I have to mention that. I have to thank them time and time again for for helping me get some equipment to make this better. 
and just giving me general support for, for what we're doing here. And I did interview Sanjay Shukla, the CEO of Atire, in episode 17. They are now reaching the next phase of the trials with their new drug. Typically, there are three phases of clinical trials, and maybe you, you know, nobody ever knew about this until COVID came along, and then you saw how quickly they were able to fast track the clinical trials with the vaccines. Well, most drugs don't have uh, that benefit, but, and, and that would include what ATIRE is working on, but they are now in, in, in fa late phase two, early phase three, depending upon when you're listening to this. Um, and so uh, I did receive an email from ATIRE telling me that they expect to report findings in the third quarter of 2021, and they're having real progress with, with their drugs. So just know that I'm talking to them and that we'll, I'll have that update for you whenever I can. Now, today, I have a real treat for you. My interview with Andrina Johnson, who is producing a full-length documentary on sarcoidosis. It's called Project Purple. She suffers from neurosarc. She is an actor, a director, and a producer with Hollywood credibility. She's been on television shows. She's been in some films that you can watch. And, and I actually just looked at her reel on her Facebook page. And you see her uh, in, these, in these roles on television. Uh, and, and I'll put a link in the show notes so you can watch that as well. She's good. I mean, I'm just going to say she is good. Uh, and then she, you know, she was moving along with her Hollywood career and sarcoidosis kind of interrupted everything. She had a, she had a bad case of neurosarc and she started taking prednisone and she had some, some troubles, uh, both acting and directing. Um, and so she, she went out and produced a short film with no budget. And I can't believe what she was able to accomplish with no budget. It's 12 minutes long. And you can actually watch it on Prime Video. Just go to Prime and then use the little search function, type in sarcoidosis, and it pops right up. And uh, she's going to talk about how she had the idea for this after her struggles with SARC and then how it's made such an impact that now she has a budget and she and ATAR Pharma is one of her sponsors. I'll just shout that out there. Um, she's producing a full-length documentary. She's got film crews, the whole nine yards, stuff she didn't have in the making of that first mini-doc. And so now it is a real thing, and she is going to come on. She's going to talk all about it here on the Sark Fighter podcast. So my interview with Andrina Johnson coming up next here on the Sark Fighter podcast. I feel like a zombie just feeding at stumbling Hi, I hope you're enjoying the Sark Fighter Podcast. You may be wondering, what can I do to help? How can I be a part of the sarcoidosis solution? It's simple. Make a donation to KISS. Kick in to stop sarcoidosis. 100% of the money goes to the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. Look for a link in the show notes of the Sark Fighter Podcast. Welcome back to the Sark Fighter Podcast. I am so excited today to have with me Andrina Johnson, who is a actor and a filmmaker and a fellow Sark fighter and, and even a fellow neuro Sark fighter. So Andrina, welcome to the Sark Fighter podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here as well. Wow. So you um, you have an amazing story to tell. You, you've done some acting in Hollywood. You have produced uh, a 12 minute sort of uh, trailer uh, sarcoidosis documentary mm -hmm. and and you but you're still fighting sarcoidosis every day while you're doing all this and I don't even know where to jump in but um, <laughs> so let's let's start with you were in LA and you were acting and you were diagnosed with sarc what was going on okay so it was the year 2010 um, I had packed all my stuff in my car and I drove all the way from Louisville, Kentucky 
to Hollywood. I just put it in my GPS and went in that direction. And I landed in LA. Um, <laughs> I didn't know a soul there. So it was kind of touch and go there at first, but then um, I found a place to stay and I started working in the industry. I made some great people. And I, that was like February of 2010. And um, I started having symptoms over that summer. Like I was having a lot of pain in my lower back and I was walking with a limp and I was beginning the production of my first short film that I was directing and producing solely. So on the set, I'm falling down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure like people would are like this director is like drunk or something <laughs> oh man because I'm all weeble wobbly and I'm like I, I didn't know what was going on with me so I'm like we're gonna get through this you know so we I you know as wobbly as I was people are helping me get around set we finished the production of that documentary I mean I'm sorry it wasn't a documentary it was a short film called um The Perfect Kid and the day that we wrapped, the next day I went into the hospital like something is wrong with me. And they did a lot of tests at first. And you think it might have a stroke. It may be MS. And then oh, I was, you know, in LA at, US, um, at the USC. They transferred me to another hospital called uh, Rancho's Los Amigos. And there, they, about a month later, it was getting, or more, it was after Thanksgiving, getting close to Christmas now, and they, I was in there for almost two months, and they finally came with the diagnosis of neurosarcoidosis. Wow. Yeah. So, so you were, um, you were having pain in your lower back, you said, so what made them look for SARC? Um, I'm, I guess because I didn't have anything else more common. So they 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 did so many tests on me, you know, the lung bar punctures, you know, and MRIs, CAT scans and all that. And, and finally a biopsy of one of my lymph nodes diagnosed me with the sarcoidosis. Got it. Which is it. pretty rare. I don't know, but I know you have neurosarcoidosis. And are you solely neuro? Like, do you have any other involvement? Not to my knowledge. No. We're rare. You know that because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. And I think only about 5% of the people with sarcoidosis simply have neurosarcoidosis. Right. Yeah. For, for me, it's right in the back of my neck. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's just, there's just like a node that just shows up every time they do an MRI and no matter what they throw at me, they can't shrink it. Mm. Um, so where is it? Where is it on your spine? Well, when they showed me the imaging of my spinal cord, they described it as my entire spinal cord was a sarcoidosis nodule. It was like up and down the entire length of my spinal cord. Wow. Yeah. And that's, that was pretty close. I had a flare and that's kind of what they were describing, but they got that back. They got that under control. So mm. are you controlled right now? Would you say? Yeah, I believe, um, you know, I'm currently receiving um, the Inflamax, the Remicade infusions every six weeks. Um, as my neuro doctor is also on the documentary and he was discussing how well um, my sarcoid has responded to the treatment. So, you know, I'm still dealing with some residual symptoms you know, with the, my mobility and not be able to stand that well and, you know, stuff that I'm trying to work through. And I, I want to show the progress that I'm making on my documentary. Um, that's because a lot of us have goals that we're trying to achieve during the process of this film that we want to share. And mine is to regain my mobility. I have gained like 90 pounds <clears throat> since my diagnosis. So... Right now, I'm trying to get in shape and see if that helps me with my mobility. Wow, that's yeah, that's tough. Of course, um, did did you have a, a time with prednisone? Have is that one of the drugs that you've passed along the way? Yes, that usually results in <laughs> yes. pretty significant weight gain. I know, and that's where it all started. And it, I just never lost the weight. 
writing his own. It used to work for me, and then it stopped, um, you know, actually reducing the size of the nodules. So we tried different therapies. And finally, in 2017, I started the Remicade, and it's been uh, managed since then. But you know, when the lesions go, they still leave the scars. And scars on your spinal cord can affect a lot of your body's function. Yeah, and I had a few in my brain, but it was mainly targeted on my spinal cord. So what, what is, what's the probability that you had this for a long time before they found it? I do not know. It seems that if it was, you know, wrapping my entire spinal cord, that it's had some time to do so. I remember um, being in grade school even and just having really well, I would say middle school, really bad back pain. And I assumed at the time it was because of my backpack because before we had, you know, laptops and, and we actually had to carry all of our books around. So I was like, oh, it's probably this backpack. But, um, but even in my early 20s, I was very athletic and I was working out at the time with my personal trainer in Hollywood, you know, trying to be Hollywood fit. And I just noticed the exercises were getting harder and harder to do. And, you know, I could do a certain exercise like pull-ups. I was able to do them one day. And then we go back like a, a week later and I can't do a single pull-up. I don't know if it was just a very aggressive form that hit suddenly or if it was something that had been manifesting for a while. So you said you went to Hollywood and you were telling your story and you talked about um, that you were directing a film, but you've also been in front of the camera quite a bit. Yes, and that you're was trying my... to be you're trying to be Hollywood fit. And so you're in your 20s <laughs> and you're buff and you're working out with a personal trainer. So um, did did you ever actually get some roles that that we would know about? Um, I don't know if you know about them, but you could probably find them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Coffin, uh, the Coffin saga is something I'm really proud of. I was in both one and two. There's a third one coming out soon and I may even be in that one, but uh, we'll see. But uh, you can find that on most streaming platforms. I know for sure Amazon Prime and Julio or right. Huli, we call it. Yeah. Hulu, Hulu. Hulu, you got That's it. That's it, right, right. Okay, and so, what? I mean, what is that like? You're in Hollywood and you wanna have a role and you know, for those of us who've never lived that life or experienced that, all we really know is what we read about in People magazine. Uh, or we mm -hmm. hear these actors after a movie's been made saying, oh, I tried out and I didn't think I was going to get it. And then I got it. So do you go to these casting calls and, and you sit in a room and what, what does that look like? <clears throat> well, you know what, all of my, the bigger roles that I've uh, got casted for, Hollywood is very much an industry that is like who you know. And before moving out there, I had started acting here in Kentucky. So fortunately, some of my Kentucky ties, when I moved out there to LA, they're like, oh, well, we have know this actress, she's out there in LA now. So I, lot, I got a lot of my roles just through word of mouth. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's great, I, right? Uh, I mean, I've gotten some, uh, maybe like some web commercials and stuff like that through a casting call, but like all of my movie roles were because I knew somebody. So, so you, you're, you're out there, you get diagnosed with sarcoidosis, then what happens to you? Well, you know, at first, uh, many, like we all know with sarcoidosis, the first round of treatment is usually prednisone. So I went to the hospital after they diagnosed me, they treated me with the prednisone and within five days of, you know, the, the IV, I'm feeling like, oh, okay, I'm back. Um, I'm a little bit bigger, but I'm back. <laughs> uh -huh. And, and you know, and they had me on the oral medication after I got out. And that maintained me for years, actually. It wasn't until 2015 or so I uh, started having complications that were more severe. And the prednisone didn't seem to be effective towards it. Wow. What, what, how many milligrams were you taking? Do you know? Do you remember? Orally, yeah. Um, it was. It started off at a hundred, and they over the year they tapered it down until I was off of it. And then anytime I had a flare up, which happened a couple of times, it would go right back. 
And yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you get, you take your headshots and stuff and your face is one way. Then you get on the prednisone and you got this round face. They're like, you're going to need some new headshots. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Or the director says you're going to need to lose some weight. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's when I started getting more behind the camera. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Because it, it is, you know, they really, when they're casting, they're looking for a particular look. And if your look has changed, it's one of the one industries where you can discriminate on sex, weight, uh, age, everything. So, Yeah, well, I, you know, they want to tell a story and they want mm -hmm. the story to look a certain way. And you're basically, mm -hmm. uh, you are there to, to help the director see his realization, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and now you're a director, so you kind of understand I, that. Well, I understand totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. I don't judge them. It's 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 okay because the character is a visual storytelling, right? And right. visual, you have to meet the visual character, you know. Yeah, right. So now I want to fast forward to um, so now I, in fact, uh, I just sat down and watched on Prime Video a 12 minute sort of mini documentary that you put together yourself and you've interviewed mm -hmm. people, uh, what in, in Canada and, um, I want to say Alabama and somebody mm -hmm. in New York state. So what, what is that all about? First of all, and then we'll talk about the bigger project that you're working on. Well, I felt inspired to use what I know, um, creatively, to kind of be a cathartic release and you know provide information about sarcoidosis. So I went online and just found people who are willing to be a part of a documentary. I didn't really know how it was gonna turn up because I had no budget. So a lot of people just uh, recorded themselves and I asked, you know, I had sent some questions in, they answered the questions and they sent all the footage to me and I put it together and made this short documentary. I was really surprised by how well received this little thing was by you know others outside of our community and appreciated so much by those living with sarcoidosis that it further inspired me to like, let's make a real film out of this. You know, there's an interest here. So let's really do this. And um that's why now we are creating a feature length documentary. We do have a budget <laughs> and um, I'm really excited to be working on that. Well, I want to go back to what I just watched. How in the world does somebody get prime video to pick up their documentary? It's uh, about who you know. <laughs> I would guess it is. Yeah. So Spencer Johnson, um, he is also the executive producer of both of the Coffin films. We have the same last names so and we call each other cousins, but he's, he's like family to me and he's become such like a mentor. And after watching the short documentary, he's like, oh, I think this should be distributed. And he offered me the distribution deal and um, that's how we got up there. And he's already interested in our next project too. So it's well, about who you know. <laughs> wow, I'll tell you what, um, that that's that is just awesome. That I mean, that you are doing more to spread the word about sarcoidosis than just about anybody uh, because mm -hmm. you, you've got it out there where the public can view it. So you just, mm -hmm. and if you're listening, you just go, I did it with um, the search function. I got on Prime Video and I just searched by the time I got to SARC, the word sarcoidosis popped up. I had to scroll down like two notches because I guess there's not a lot of stuff that starts with SARC. But anyway, mm -hmm. boom. And then the, the name of it is, um, is it sarcoidosis awareness? What, what? But surviving sarcoidosis. Surviving sarcoidosis. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then it just jumps right into it. And then I did. I saw um, Spencer Johnson coming up under the credits and I thought, oh, I wonder if that's a family member. <laughs> yeah, we're both... family. We always say yeah. we're cousins. They're right. play cousins. <laughs> right. So, and, and you just edited that at home? Yeah, yeah. 
on my little laptop. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, that was my first time ever editing. And I was really happy with myself. And now it's something that I'm doing more of. I'm like, oh, I can do this. So I learned a new talent. <laughs> wow. So when yeah. when did you when did you produce that? What year? Was it pre-COVID? Yes. Um, okay. I had the idea in like late 2017. People sent all their footage in over the next year. And that was released on April 1st for Sarcoidosis Awareness Month of 2018. And 19. 19. Okay. Got it. And you did that with, with zero budget. So now you're producing and you did that with no camera crews, no nothing. Yeah. You just had people looking at their laptops, looking at their phones. And <laughs> you know, it's amazing how now that we've learned in COVID, how well that actually works mm-hmm. uh, in terms of what we put on the news, but we don't have the production values that, that you have. Um, which are much higher. So now tell me about this production that you're working on for the future. Okay, I'm really excited. So first of all, I would like to tell everyone about all of the people who are associated with this project. Um, We are working with Spencer Johnson's nonprofit, Real Independent Film Extravaganza to produce this documentary. we now have Cleveland Clinic, who is going to, we're going to be interviewing um, the Sarcoidosis Center there and working with their media department to do so. Um, Karen Duffy, the Duff, um, an actress also li- living with neurosarcoidosis, is going to be featured. And Attire Pharma, Attire Pharma, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, um, they have an associate producer credit on this film. And I believe I named all of the recognizable names. Um, I will, there's a possibility the Bernie Mac Foundation may be affiliated with it. And I'm just so overwhelmed by how many people have came together to join me in creating this documentary. And then of course we have just, you know, I wouldn't say typical people, but normal people within our community who are featured in this documentary dealing with life and sarcoidosis, Um, each one trying to overcome this disease to live their best life. And that includes myself. Um, We've traveled to Pennsylvania, Houston. The film is, oh yes, Janine Sarcoidosis Outreach Foundation, Miss Emma Carroll, the film is, dedicated to her daughter, Janine, who passed away uh, due to complications of sarcoidosis. And she's been amazing. And she's the one who has connected me to a lot of people as well. Wow. So, so you say you have been to those places. So are you accompanying the camera crews? I'm the director. You're the director. So, yeah. so, but you have to, you have to, you get to, <laughs> you are <laughs> yes. needed to, I'm not sure what the word is, but, but you are there for all of these interviews. Yes. Yes. You know, um, we did that over the summer when the COVID cases were a little bit lower. Now we took a little hiatus over the winter. We did film my doctor this past Friday, but he's been vaccinated and, um, I'm getting my first shot Friday too. So I'm excited about that. So uh, um, I really want to ensure the safety of myself and our, you know, everyone that we're filming is considered high risk. So we want to be cautious or aware of that too when we go forward in the production process. Sure, sure. So yeah, I, in fact, I just got my first shot uh, this past Saturday. I got the mm-hmm. Pfizer. Did you get the Moderna or the Pfizer? Oh, no, I get my first one oh, Friday. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> you, which, do you know which one you'll be getting? I don't care. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. I mean, it's like, give me a shot. Just, just give me the shot. Don't know. Yeah, I'll ask yeah. them, but you know, whatever they got, give it to me. Right, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, when do you think you'll wrap up shooting and then editing? And when might the world see this? So we're planning on hosting a purple carpet premiere. It may be, it's looking like it's going to be in Houston, Texas, or here in Louisville, Kentucky. We still have about four more subjects to film. 
So, you know, you never know how the post-production process is going to go. So we're aiming for maybe a release of uh, in 2023. Ooh, that long, huh? Hey, you know, everybody outside of the film community, you might not be aware of how much time actually goes into producing quality film, you know? We, you know, this, we want it to be something that can compete in the top tier film festivals like Tribeca, Kings, uh, you know, so um, a lot of care and thought goes into that and it's not as quick as, as that uh, short film would have been, <laughs> was. Sure. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, I, I know enough, uh, I know enough to know that there's a lot I don't know. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. We go out, you know, with, with in the television station, but we have to turn these stories around every day. So you start at nine o'clock in the morning with nothing. And at five o'clock, you've got a three minute story or a two minute story, or, uh, you know, unfortunately, oftentimes it's a minute and a half story, but we, but we turn it around with the best production values we can throw at it. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I know that given uh, as much time as needed, those, those could always be, so much better. So you're going out with camera, lights, sound people, makeup, the whole nine yards. No makeup because of COVID, you know. But sure. okay. And then uh, we've we have a what they call a skeleton crew, just the basic members. So we don't have as many people on set. Uh, again, since we're dealing with subjects who are considered high risk. So we pretty have um, Vlad, Vlad Morales. He is um, a cinematographer here in Louisville, Kentucky. And he has been a one-man show. Like he has done lights, sound, camera. All I have to do is say action. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So what kind of stories will we hear when the documentary comes out? Okay, so I'll use first name only for right now, Teresa. She is, um, she has sarcoidosis in several organs of her body and is pregnant. She found out during the production process that um, she will be having a child soon. So we're following her journey. Um, she's doing a video diary. So when we're not there, we can still keep up to how she's doing. Um, myself, you know, again, I'm trying to, get into shape so I can regain some of my mobility and maybe get back in front of the camera a little bit more. Um, we have another subject, Angela. She's into becoming a public speaker. So we're gonna be um, hooking her up with some resources that may help propel her on her journey to become um, more of an advocate and a public, public speaker and just amazing people just trying to live their best lives. And we're gonna show their progress throughout the year or 18 months uh, that we'll take to produce this documentary. Yeah, well, we hear a lot of those types of stories here on the Sark Fighter podcast as well. People, mm -hmm. people talking about, you know, one day they're, they're hiking in the Grand Canyon and they're, they're used to being able to do that and all of a sudden they can't, they can't get, you know, can't get up, can't walk up the trail, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And, and lots of people who, like you mentioned, you were working out who are, you know, very fit. Um, the guy who wrote the song, uh, Zombie, uh, for the Sark Fighter podcast, he was a hockey player. And all of a sudden, oh, wow. you know, he couldn't play hockey anymore, you know. So, uh, and, and so I would assume it would be seeing some of those kinds of stories as you move mm -hmm. through this. Yeah, um, they'll be explaining what their life was pre-sarcodosis, what it's like now, and what they hope to do in the future. Right. All right. So what would you say? You're half done with the shooting portion of this now? We're, you know, this thing keeps growing. Like, I didn't know we were going to have the Cleveland Clinic's involvement until just like a week ago. So oh, wow. I thought we are at the midpoint, but, you know, um, I, I'm going to let it keep growing and whatever, whoever, if we reach somebody else that might be important in this, you know, as far as getting research information available to include on the documentary, we're gonna go and we're gonna film it. But 
we're approximately midway through um, the production process. We still have four more subjects to film and, um, and that does not include, we may even have Atar Pharma CEO on the documentary or we Sanjay. Have, I don't know him. I would have to meet him. It's been, been, he's been on the podcast. Oh, yeah. has he? Yes, okay. he has. Uh, and 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 Atar um, also underwrites the Sark Fighter podcast. So um, I saw that there was some affiliation. They share yeah. your stuff a lot on Twitter. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, they've been uh, they've been a super partner. Um, so yeah, and then so now what will you do? Because I also go to the Cleveland Clinic. So mm -hmm. what what will be happening with the Cleveland Clinic? We're just going to be interviewing Dr. Moss. Are you familiar with him? Brandon, yes. Oh, uh, so you know everyone. <laughs> yeah, he's my doctor. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So cool. you're going to interview him about how NeuroSARC works and all that? Well, we're going to be talking about uh, sarcoidosis in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, and I'm asked, actually having... If you go to my social media, I actually have a post up right now where I'm trying to get um, people from the community to put in, ask questions that you may want um, included in that interview. Uh, so. you, you've got to send me links to all of your social media so I can put it in the show notes so mm -hmm. listeners can then click on it easily and uh, and find find you and find everything that you're doing. Will um, do. Yeah. So, man, that's awesome. Now you mentioned Karen Duffy. That's a big name. She, yes. she was a, a VJ uh, for um, um, MTV. MTV. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. having a sarcoidosis moment there, <laughs> but, then, but, then, but then a pretty well-known actress after that. So, yes. And, and I, model. I, didn't, I didn't know she had sarcoidosis. You did it? Honestly, until she's a neurosarcoid warrior. <laughs> oh wow! So, yeah. so what's her role going to be in all of this? Well, we're just going to be interviewing her, um, and I just I'm just honored to have her on the documentary. <laughs> How hard was it to approach her? Well, actually, Emma Carroll that I was telling you about, she connected me to her, and actually, talking to um, Karen Duffy is very easy. She's very pleasant, nice person. So it was exactly. like, it, it was very exciting to talk to her and she's super nice. So it yeah, wasn't you, difficult at all. You Google her, you get so many pictures. And so, you know, it's um, yeah, uh, because she's been- A lot of people remember her as the um, Charlie Red girl when she was doing the commercials too. Okay. I think it was Charlie. Yeah, was, she was a Charlie girl. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. That's- that's something. Is she still acting? I know she's still producing. Uh -huh. uh, she's doing more stuff behind the cameras and she's writing books. I'm not sure if she's been in front of the camera lately. Okay. Am I allowed to ask you about the Bernie Mac Foundation? I don't have much information to give on that right now. Okay. All right. Well, that's just another but, big name. It seems like Rhonda you're... McCullen, I will say Bernie Mac's widow, has... Um, expressed interest in being a part of this documentary this is just growing and growing isn't it? i know like i didn't know she was going to be a part of it so that's why i'm like i don't know how big this is going to be but i feel like we're at the midpoint unless other great things come <laughs> wow well you know i mean you're already you you've got You've got a major uh, pharmaceutical company. You've got uh, the Cleveland Clinic, which is, to me, that's the holy grail of sarcoidosis treatment. I know there are another a number of other good ones out there, um, but uh, you know, I drive seven hours mm. twice a year just to go there and see the doctors there. And I've talked about it a lot on the podcast. And I don't have any, I don't have any affiliation with them, uh, but I just feel like you know, they are looking at sarcoidosis patients every single day. And to me, even though my doctor here in Roanoke, Virginia, kind of can follow the protocols and is a very good doctor, he's, mm -hmm. he's got a handful of, of SARC patients. Whereas when you go to the clinic, everybody's a SARC patient. I think that yeah, makes a difference. Yeah, they specialize in it. Right. right. They, they just see the more nuanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and actually it was my doctor who made... Um, 
that reached out to the Cleveland Clinic to be on the documentary. So he's he knows, um, I think someone from the Cleveland Clinic is now working with him. So there was already that tie and thanks to him, now the Cleveland Clinic will be on our documentary. Wow, that's that's fantastic. So at what point do you say enough is enough? Let's go edit this and present it to the public because it sounds like you keep finding new opportunities as you keep along. <laughs> that's an excellent question. Um, we already are editing it uh, because you have we record the sound. You know, this is a little bit techy, but we record the sound separately. So you have to match all the sound up to the video. So that's a, a whole long process itself. Um, I don't, it would just, if we had a new opportunity, I will never say no to a good opportunity. We would just have a longer film. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, and I wanna go back to something else you said. We're gonna have a purple carpet premiere. Yes. So, yes. I mean, if you're in the SART community, maybe you know that you know why purple, but tell everybody why purple. Well, because purple is the color for sarcoidosis awareness and the color of the ribbon that we wear. Um, and I would like to host it in April for a sarcoidosis awareness month. So I feel it would be very festive and very fun to, instead of a red carpet, to put a purple carpet down and have everyone walk the runway. Yeah, I see your purple. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm rocking my purple today, yeah, right? Mine's purple too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay. So 2023, April, that's, that's doable, man. 2023 I, you know, I possibly is possibly even 2024, depending. So we've, I want to go I cover it for the podcast. So I just, I just need oh, to know. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm going to, go, I'm going to go cover it for the podcast. So that'd be uh, great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Especially if we have it here in Louisville, Kentucky, it'd be a little bit closer to you. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Although uh, I owe my wife a trip to Hollywood. So uh, you know, if, <laughs> well, if, you, know. if you rolled it out in Hollywood, uh, you know, I'll, uh, uh, she would be very happy. I got to go out a few years ago. Um, a long time ago, actually, I did an interview with Dr. Phil when the show was in its the beginning of its second year. And so mm -hmm. I got to stay in Hollywood for a few days while we did this big interview because um, we have the Dr. Phil show on, on Channel 10 where I work. But um, mm -hmm. so I got to see a bunch of the stuff that my wife has never seen. So she so, you know, if you have it in Hollywood, we'll make it to Hollywood. <laughs> I'm a Dr. Phil fan and I was trying to get on his show. Really? Yeah. We had the whole, um, <laughs> I'll say a social media campaign to uh, get his attention. It hasn't worked yet though. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Yeah. But, although lately anymore, unless your whole family is just dissolving around you, I don't think he's interested. Yeah, yeah. It seems like if you have kids or you're from Texas, he puts a liking on you more. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> So now, and do you have a, a family? Do you have kids? I, I didn't even ask no, you about your No, I'm a single, life. I'm a single lady. No kids, no husband. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And you say you're trying to get your mobility back. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your level of mobility right now? Um, I use a, uh, what do you call a rollator, a walker with a chair to get around because standing more than like a couple of minutes is causes excruciating pain to my lower back. So I have to sit down a lot. And I have a lot of stiffness in my right leg, which makes it hard to lift up and walk. I do have a cool device though. It's the Bioness device. Have you heard about these? Um, it's kind of like a stem device that you wear and it kind of shocks you with a little electricity and gets your nerves to move your muscles. So I don't drag my foot when I walk. Huh. Interesting. Pretty cool. And that yeah. works? Yeah. Nope. It works as far as me not dragging my foot. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What is, what's the probability you'll get back to some semblance of pre-SARC life? Um, you know, doctors never like to promise anything like that. They just, you know, as long as you don't get worse, they're happy. So 
it's pretty much just a faith mission that I'm trying to get back um, more active. I know you're really active with neurosarcoidosis. What's your secret? You know, I tell you, um, I have pretty significant neuropathy from my chest all the way down to my feet, but I don't have any pain, fortunately. I but I have mm. tingling and numbness. Um, so uh, you know, like the dog could I could be sitting on the couch and the dog could come and sleep on my leg, my little my little dog, and I wouldn't even feel it. Mm. So um, but fortunately it's not pain. I don't I don't deal with like that like you do. Uh, and my secret has been I've been active my whole life. I, you know, played basketball and in high school and, um, and started cycling and hiking and, and I was a marathon runner for a while. Um, and I've just done whatever I can. And I notice if I take a few days off, my legs start to get stiff. And so, you know, I don't do anything at the, at the level that I once did, which is kind of frustrating, but the fact that I can still do it makes me happy yeah. so, and so my key is just to not stop just don't stop. and I think that's where I messed up at uh -huh. I used to be very active and I if nothing else I would do like um, hot yoga and I had stopped doing it because I was embarrassed because I was having so much trouble and I didn't like you know judging myself in front of others so I had stopped doing that and then everything just kind of locked up on me so I I'm trying to get back active. I know it's easier to stay active uh, so you don't have that. So <laughs> word of advice from someone, stay active as much as you can because the sedentary lifestyle kind of does change the way your body works. And, and I, I regret uh, not remaining active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've uh, I, you mentioned yoga and that's one of those things that I feel like um, I know that like my core muscles have atrophied because mm -hmm. they're not really engaged because I can't feel them. And so I feel like I need to do some things like I, I'm just making this up like yoga or Pilates or something mm -hmm. like that. Too. Yeah. Pilates is really good for core strength yoga too. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like I probably should do that, but I'm also extremely self-conscious. Like I can't see me going into a room with a bunch of people and, and I'm not limber <laughs> you know, and, and like failing. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Maybe we should have like a warrior's uh, Pilates class <laughs> where we would all go on and be right? on the same level. <laughs> right. I think I would do that. I, 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 I need everybody else beside me tipping over. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to see anyone do it like ex the um, advanced poses when I'm sitting there trying to just balance on one foot. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I can't balance on one foot anymore. It's awful. Yeah, It's awful. Um, so how is your mental health then? You know, I, I try to keep my brain busy and I also work as a substitute teacher whenever it's, the schools are open. And um, I find that giving puts me outside of myself, like working with the kids or working on my advocacy work, puts me outside of myself. So I'm not reflecting on what's bad. If I'm isolated and I'm not giving towards, you know, to help others, I can get in a mindset that is not healthy. So I try to do things that I love, do whatever I still can do and give to others and it really helps yeah for sure um one of the one of the things that i've heard with some of the other sark fighters that i've or sark warriors i say sark fighters because of the podcast but mm -hmm. you know we're all we're all sark warriors um but a lot of the folks who've come on to tell their story just kind of uh, and this is this is a term that wasn't so overused of pre-covid but the new normal but mm -hmm. sark patients were coming to terms with their new normal and stopping and smelling the roses, you know, the roses might be the destination. You're not stopping on the way. You're just trying to get to the roses to begin with. And that's yeah. got to be okay. Yeah. That's a good, I like that analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So um, you'll send me all of your information so we can share it with the listeners. Is there anything else that, that you want to say about the, the, the name of the project? Is is Project Purple Mission Sarcoidosis? Awareness, yes. Oh, and um, I can't read my own writing. I should have put my glasses now. <laughs> All of um, the links to our social media, you can subscribe to our newsletter and check out our online store for gear and merchandise. All of those links are available on our website, purpledocumentary.com. Purpledocumentary.com. And you've got some merch? Yeah, I'm wearing, I know they can't see it, but oh, there you go. this is one of our uh, designs and we have mugs, tees, hoodies, sweaters, stuff like that. Um, all the proceeds go towards the production of this documentary. Wow. Wow. And you're still fundraising, I would assume. You're always fundraising for the documentary. Well, right? yeah. Um, we have reached enough to cover the production expenses, but um, we are trying to raise more to cover um, our film festival run, the premiere, and other post-production expenses, um, including marketing. Um, so you can give uh, also at that site if you go to purpledocumentary.com you'll see a link where you can donate to our GoFundMe Outstanding Outstanding. (laughs) Thank you for everything you are doing to get sarcoidosis on people's radar It's my pleasure and thank you for having me today And Trina is just on top of this I hate that she has sarcoidosis I hate it for anybody but She's doing a lot for all of us by making this film. She's reached out to some of the big names, people that other people know who have Sark, and they are stepping up to be in this film, as well as as well as some people that are sort of everyday folks just like you and me, people who, who have been uh, like the people who have been here on the Sark Fighter podcast. And there are a lot of links when you start talking about Andrina Johnson, and I will find all the ones that I can find in the show notes so that you can quickly move around some of the things she's been involved with. She even has her own page on IMDb, which is impressive. That's the, that's the website that tracks all the actors, directors, producers in Hollywood. Uh, I've got to mention, I loved watching her acting real on her Facebook page and the little mini documentary on Prime Video, something that you'll enjoy, especially if you like this podcast. If you've tuned in to listen here and you want to hear the stories of people and how they're fighting sarcoidosis, then then you definitely have to go spend 12 minutes watching her uh, her mini documentary now. And I, and I will tell you, you heard some conversation and then Andrina and I spoke a little bit more after we were done recording, but, but we're going to stay in touch and I want to see how things are going with the, her documentary. I've offered to help her promote it when the time is right. If she feels like the Sark fighter podcast can help her spread the word. Uh, so we'll keep you posted. And, and if, Uh, she wants to come back on or if some of the people she interviewed want to come on and talk about it as relates to their role in the documentary then then we can do that Um, but man this is really cool and you need to check out her Facebook page and her other links uh, and and do do this whatever Facebook wants you to do whether it's liking a comment commenting yourself liking following uh, any of her social media do that because that helps Andrina uh, with with everything that she's trying to accomplish by spreading the word. So let's help her do all the good that she can do with her production. And let's let's show the, the Facebook algorithm that there's a lot of people interested in this. So the more clicks and likes that she gets and the follows that she gets, that just that just lifts her up and it makes it so other people who, who are looking for answers will find what Andrina is doing. So let's let's help her out by doing that. Okay? In the meantime, I've just got to say thanks for listening, and until next time, keep fighting. Just feeding that stumbling
gonna suffer. You feel pain someday and learn endurance. Your strength will fade away. Dead man walking, trying to keep up the pace. Dead man walking, counting.